Hey, is that folk music that you play there? What is that? How do you call that folk music? <laughs> I think it was Studs Terkel who asked Big Bill Brunzi, did he consider his blues music to be folk music? And Big Bill says, well, I never heard no horses. <laughs> Heart musician, you may or may not know. I let my music take me where my fingers want to flow. There are those who give me praise, there are those who call me crazy. But maybe that they're listening is all I need to know. And it's hold down your things and listen to my strings while I sing and bring a memory to your mind. It may be a cherished one, the one we've never shared before. Let's create all the memories that we can find. Havana was a loved one, who never touched a spoke. Met her on a bus one night and before she woke I could see it in her mouth The face was not her own Was just about to moan or smile of someone I had known And the eyes in her head I had seen in someone's bed Just before she said she loved me and before she said to go And Havana had her pictures cuddled in her mental bed And she also was a picture on the bus and in my head and it's hold down your things and listen to my strings while I sing and bring a memory to your mind. It may be a cherished one, a one we've never shared before. Let's create all the memories that we can find. Do -do 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 -do. Slowly down canals you call your life, making waves that leave an imprint on the walls. And the face you thought you recognized was just a souvenir. Still, you can smile, the picture hasn't changed at all. And though you've never seen a place, you still can know it well. Just put it where you want it and remember it to tell. For what all is a meant is a looking at the waves. And what all is a fantasy but a fantasy you say? And it's hold down your things and listen to my strings while I sing and bring a memory to your mind. It may be a cherished one, one we've never shared before. Let's create all the memories that we can find.
Thank you. All right, all right, all right. It, it is great to be here, Ralph. The show is hard to say none of it. My name is Ralph Litwin, and our guest is Sam Edelston. Hi there, everybody. Welcome. It's great to be here. Great to have you. So, does everybody know what this instrument is? I do, but okay. I'm okay. sure there are okay. viewers who don't. Okay, so this is an this is called a mountain dulcimer, an Appalachian dulcimer, or a fretted dulcimer. They're two unrelated instruments that are called dulcimers. They're related sort of the way that uh, Lyndon Johnson and Magic Johnson are related. Uh, the mountain dulcimer, which is this with usually three or four strings, um, or the hammered dulcimer, which typically has dozens of strings, which I also play but which I do not have here. Um, and uh, the one that I was playing there is a baritone. This one here that I'm taking out next happens to be a, uh, one with a higher, more normal voice. Uh, but again, with, the, with three strings tuned like the beginning of 2001 Space Odyssey. So, uh, it's, it's usually used for traditional music, but the, uh, the mountain dulcimer is just good for so, oh so much more than that. Rock and roll and opera and uh, marches and Broadway songs and all sorts of things that, that you can't necessarily play on this show. But uh, um, it is also just wonderful for the traditional music and, uh, and for original songs as well. That song that I started with, by the way, is something that I wrote back uh, actually when I was in my college days. And uh, I had to change the first line of the song for this uh, performance here because the actual first line at the time was, I am a young guitarist. Mm -hmm. And well, I didn't bring the guitar tonight and uh, I'm having increasing difficulty convincing people that I am still young. I know that. <laughs> but uh, uh, one day I just sort of found myself playing that riff. Just fun. I knew I had to do something with it. And after about an hour of playing it just like that, I finally came up with something to do with it. So uh, uh, would you like to hear a little bit more? Would you like to hear a little bit more about the dulcimer? Tell me what, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. <laughs> I'd like to hear whatever you want to okay. play or okay. say. Okay, so you know, uh, this is a... This is a I'm going to play a, a dulcimer piece. This is actually an instrumental piece that was written by a man named Robert Force, who was a legend in the, in the world of mountain dulcimers. He wrote a book called In Search of the Wild Dulcimer, which has over 100,000 copies in print. Wow. And um, I, I met Robert fortuitously. Um, I, I actually, he's such a legend, I, I didn't know that he was still alive. And I was at a college reunion, and I met somebody who saw me with a guitar case. And said, you know, we got into a conversation. He said, oh, do you know my friend Robert Force if you're a dulcimer player? And I uh, wound up meeting Robert Force as a result of that conversation. And uh, so this is a tune by Robert Force. This is called Wellin. Um, and uh, it, it is just from about 1970, from the days when a lot of hippies played dulcimers. Uh, Robert plays standing up with the dulcimer on a strap, and I've discovered that you can't really understand well in if you just play sitting down. You really have to stand and be able to move with the music. So, well in.
Thank you. All right. So, so uh, I actually run a dulcimer festival up in Connecticut, and uh, as a result of meeting Robert by f by phone, I, I I wound up inviting him out to be one of our featured performers that year. And uh, he came out another year and brought out, he said, Sam, I'd, I'd like to bring an electric dulcimer out and have you try it. It's a prototype. I'm designing it with a, uh, with a builder friend of mine. And uh, it was, you know, I, I'm, I'm a total acoustic musician at heart. I can't say that actually right now. Um, but, uh, but I grew up with acoustic instruments. And the, only, the first time I bought an electric instrument was an electric guitar so I could practice in college without disturbing my roommate. Um, and so it, the electric dulcimer just was so much fun to play that when the builder was ready to go into production on them, I said, I've got to have one. And so Robert uh, got the number one Robert Force signature model uh, Black Wolf dulcimer, and I got the number two out of the limited run edition. And I have had an indecent amount of fun playing electric dulcimer. Um, uh, and actually, the first song I ever played on it was that. <clears throat> Excuse me, but um, I understand yeah. you had a viral internet YouTube. <laughs> oh, that was a that was a real experience. Uh, I, I have this personal cause about dulcimers. I believe that dulcimers are among the world's coolest musical instruments, and they deserve to be known the way that harmonicas. Everybody knows harmonicas. Everybody knows banjos. Everybody knows guitars. Nobody knows dulcimers. And so I'm trying to change that. Um, and as I said, dulcimers are good for so much more than just you know, the usual wonderful folk music. And so I've started putting videos out on YouTube with other kinds of music that people consider you know, sort of relevant or popular. So one Thursday night after work, I went home and I uh, recorded, uh, I, I, had another, I had over a dozen already out at this time, but I recorded um, the Led Zeppelin song, Whole Lot of Love, on my electric dulcimer with about nine pedals going through two channels. And there was just something magical about the way that the pedals worked together, that channel one was giving me a nice gritty bass with some nice dirt in it. And channel two was, uh, was my chorus and my wah pedal and, and the sustainer and a couple of other things. And it sounded like I had a Phil Spector wall of sound. This, you know, this rock and roll looking type of guy here, um, uh, wear, wearing my obvious rock and roll outfit um, with my bookcase in the background and, the, and some plaques up on the wall and, uh, and uh, this quaint little three stringed instrument nothing thing and out roars Led Zeppelin. And it just struck a nerve somehow. There was just something about it that caught people right. And it is the most amazing, capricious gift that the universe can give you. How many people have you seen on Facebook stuck in a video where they fell face first into the wedding cake and they got 12 million hits? And they have to live with that, hey, you're the guy that fell into the wedding cake for the rest of their life. And the comments that I get off of a whole lot of love or off of Psycho Killer or off of Crazy Train or some of the other, or you know, Pinball Wizard, things like that. <clears throat> it's like, you made my Monday. I was having a rotten day and then I saw this video, incredible, wow. Or I never knew you could do this stuff on a dulcimer. That's incredible. I'm going to go out and buy one. Uh, or this guy wins the internet. Or one of my favorites, uh, slow day in the anthropology department, I guess. <laughs> so, um, so at this point, if you don't count people like Cindy Lauper who, you know, and, and the Rolling Stones who are famous you know, performers who use dulcimers, uh, I'm like number six on YouTube with a with whole lot of love. Um, and it has been a really cool, amazing, remarkable experience, and I wish it on all of my musical friends that they, they could all have this kind of moment in the sun. That's very nice. So, thank you. So uh, uh, would you like to hear something uh, unconventional for the dulcimer? Sure. OK. Um, this is an oldie but goodie. It's, um, this is uh, Gilbert and Sullivan, because opera is also very good on, on the dulcimer. And uh, so this is from, uh, from the Pirates of Penzance uh, with cat-like tread from when the uh, pirates are sneaking up stealthily to raid the castle. 
and singing loudly about how silently they are approaching. Hurrah! Huzzah! Hurrah! Hurrah! <laughs> so, uh, so that's how you play the mountain dulcimer. I'm going I'm to switch over to this one if you don't mind. Do, how many, how, how many more songs do we have time for here? About two. About two. Oh, good. So I've got, um, a, a, well, I've, I've got something else completely different. Great. Hmm? You know what? I tune because I care. Now, traditionally, traditionally, uh, the way that a lot of uh, you know, uh, the, the folk play it, uh, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll play a, a fiddle tune or a traditional tune that's diatonic with diatonic frets. And, uh, and depending on what key and what mode the, the piece or the song is in, They'll retune the melody string to have the melody in the right key, and then they would retune the two drone strings to fit with the key. Uh, I do a lot more of the chordal types of music, and I'll and I'll play um, uh, uh, more sort of fancy stuff in different kinds of lines of music. And so normally I play in one five eight tuning. Uh, on this one it's A E A. On that one it's D A D. Um, but uh, but the song that I opened the show with, I actually played in a different tuning. Anyhow, this is the closest I've got tonight to a traditional song. Uh, you all know the, so the story of John Henry. Well, this is a true story that happened to me at the office one day. And I have to let you know that I, I work with my family. Uh, my mother still, she's in her 80s, and she work, comes in to work every day. My, my sisters are at the office. So it's a, a wonderful thing working with good family. Um, this is just one of those little incidents.
When Sam was a little bitty baby Sitting on his mammy's knee He said, Rita, I've enjoyed being pampered all my life Bathroom's gonna be the death of me Bathroom's gonna be the death of me So 40 years passed and lots of stuff happened And everybody had a ball and Sam had a job with an office with a window with a men's room down the hall. With a men's room down the hall. One day Sam went into the men's room. The door had been left ajar. So he helpfully clicked that metal door shut. But the lock was broken. Hardy har har. Yeah, the lock was broken, hardy har har. So the next guy came along and he said, hey, this door won't open. And Sam yelled out from inside, yeah, that's for sure. Soon everyone was screaming, Sam's locked in the job, except one gal who said, who locked him in thar? She really said, who locked him in thar? Well, understandably, the office went into a tizzy. But Sam remained cool and calm. He said, I've got the water and I've got the toilets, so you'll need what I've got before long. Yeah, you'll need what I've got before long. No need to worry. The power room is songwriter. They tried credit cards, coat hangers, and prayer groups. They're beginning to have their doubts. Sam said, get a hammer and a nail. Slip them underneath the door. I'm gonna whop them hinge pins out. I'm gonna whop them hinge pins out. So this guy Kenny come up from the building. But a hammer is not what he chose to bring. He said, I've got a screwdriver and I'm gonna let you out. And Sam said, thanks, but I don't drink. Said, thanks, but I don't drink. So Kenny jammed his nine pound screwdriver in between the door and the frame. And it pushed and it heaved and it popped that bolt and Poof Sam was free once again. Yeah, Poof Sam was free once again. They pass in the lobby. Kenny smiles real big and says hello to Sam. And Sam just says to anyone who listens, Yonder walks a screwdriving man. Yeah, yonder walks a screwdriving man. And the ridiculous thing is I had to make up almost nothing in that. The only thing that was made up was the credit cards and prayer groups. So, so thank you. Well, we just have time to thank you. Mm -hmm. We can refer people to your website okay. for more information about you and your music and okay. your videos. Great. Well, so my website, nobody can spell my last name correctly, and nobody can spell dulcimer necessarily. So uh, I, my wife said, why don't you do Sam the Music Man? So I'm samthemusicman.com. And I also run the Nutmeg Dulcimer Festival up in Connecticut, and Connecticut being the nutmeg state. So if you look up Nutmeg Dulcimer in Connecticut, uh, we are there and we're every October. Thank you for being our guest. I'm okay. Horses Sigmund of it. Okay, hey, thank you. It's been a pleasure being with you. 
Want to do a little bit of blues on the way out? Yeah. Okay. That'd be good.